Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, yesterday morning while I was having my coffee in the office over there, I found myself on Facebook in a machinist group on Facebook, and I exchanged a couple of lines of comments, if you will, with a guy named Jeff Zack. Well, someone had posted a picture of this piece right here, and the question was how to find certain coordinates on that. And although I didn't have all the numbers I needed because I didn't realize you could click on a Facebook image and blow it up, Jeff and I went back and forth a few times, and so this is a shout out to him. Patient, courteous, Jeff, thank you very much, but okay. That being said, the person that drew this, or the person that posted this and asked where that point was, all the other dimensions were given, and in order to swing an arc to a certain point, well, I guess that's where the party started. But it's really not all that hard if you just know this little ABC thing at the top. I'm going to step off with the camera and zoom in on this, and so you're just going to see the back of my hand. Mechanically, it's going to work a lot better, so hang in. All right, if you take a look at this part, there is a lot of information given here. Actually, there is enough information given here to locate that point with absolutely no problem whatsoever. If you know that the radius is given, you know the thickness of your part, you know from the center line of the radius, this is the origin of the radius out here, from the center line up would then be the overall thickness minus the 35, so this is now 97. The radius of 195, we're going to make a triangle, and here's the triangle. That particular leg is going to be the radius leg, so this is 195 here. We know the height from the center line up, so we strike a perpendicular from this point down. So we know this is 97. Now looking at it this way, you have all the information that is required using the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's call this c. Let's call this a. And b is the unknown. So the mechanics behind this, and I'm going to word this relatively simply, is 195 squared, 195 times 195, minus the sum of these two squared. So 97 times itself, this is God knows what, all subtracted from this, gives you a certain value, and it's the square root of that value. So there's your triangle. That's the mechanics behind finding this point. Once you know what the base leg is, this way, subtract the offset, and that gives you this motion right here, times 97. Easy to find that point. Not a problem. I'm going to erase this for a second, and I'm going to show you another triangle called a 345, which is very popular in the world. And if you're a contractor, if you're a carpenter or a deck builder, a house builder, then you know what the 345 triangle is. Well, that makes a mess, huh? Okay, here comes the 345 triangle. that this is still in frame for you guys. Yep, I like it. Now to illustrate the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's a lot easier with smaller numbers. So 5 times 5 is 25. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4, 16. 16 and 9 come together, that's 25. 25 equals 25. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All day, so long as you have a right triangle. That is going to work. So if you have two of the three, two of the two, whatever, you can use combinations, add, subtract, to find the missing element. Simple. 
The 3-4-5 triangle is also very good if you're building a deck or framing a wall or some other modular structure. You have a wall, you have a board projecting from that wall, you want to make sure that that board, let's say you're looking down from the roof onto a deck and you want to lay out that first corner of the deck or whatever. If you measure down three feet off the house, four feet over on the sill, and you swing this board back and forth, when you have a five foot measurement here, you have a square corner. Any carpenter is going to be able to tell you that. Three, four, five. Remember that. The same problem that we just had trying to locate the corner of that part, it's a perfect opportunity to illustrate chords of a circle. That's actually not too bad. Right, let me still double check that here. Right. The chord of a circle is any segment of that circle. That line across right there, that's a chord. In order to find the center of any given circle, if you're laying something out like in sheet metal, you strike a line across any part of that circle, project the line through it. Well, when you strike a line against another side, now it's got to be in the center. You can measure it and strike it up. Where those two lines cross, that's the center of that circle. Easy to find. Just mechanics. Back to the court. You have your circle. On the print it says, okay, I want a specific width flat on a piece of round bar. How far down do you mill in order to get that flat on that bar? Let's say this is a one inch bar. And who God knows, let's say that's a 600 wide. What is that notch? I mean, you're going to have to just cut and measure, cut and measure, cut and measure. No, you can use the same ABC squared thing right here. Where's the triangle? This is your radius value, so that's 0.5. Perpendicular, square corner, splits the cord. This is 300. Now that you have the 0.5 and the 0.3, you use the same A squared, B squared, C squared formula, gives you this leg. And then it is radius minus x equals the depth, right here. Radius minus x, because it's the same radius going vertical. So the whole cord, the whole leg right here is a radius value minus this, gives you the missing section. It's not that hard. Simple. Another little handy piece of math that I've used my entire career. Once again, a circle. And hopefully that's still a frame. Sorry about this, guys. I should have a mirror behind this camera. Yeah, that's not bad. Somebody goes, all right. We want to take this round stock, and we want to either mill a hex on it or whatever. But let's just draw a hex on there real quick. What is the starting diameter to make a hex out of a piece of round stock? Simple piece of cake. Hex size, let's call it HS. Hex size. Flat to flat. Times, here comes the magic number. 1.155. Hex size times that number right there. 1 inch, 155 or 1.155 will give you a diameter capable of producing the hex to the size that you start with.
All right, guys, well, those particular examples were somewhat random, but, you know, these things occur daily. I know they occur with me on a regular basis, and they're very helpful. This 1.155, I have a piece of masking tape in the top of my toolbox with that number written on it for 25 years because I cut so many hexes. There's always a hex drive feature or flats or whatever. Knowing the A squared, B squared, C squared formula is really important. You do not need SolidWorks, CAD, Master Cam, or anything to start figuring out chords of a circle or figuring out triangles or points of projection. Right there. Piece of cake. Get used to it. If you're going to go buy a calculator or your phone, just look for a square root function on your phone and uh, use it. It's going to be very helpful. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that. Quickie little shop math tips to make your life easy. Joel Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.